Colorectal cancer is a major public health concern. Now, if you look at the National Cancer Registry Report 2012 to 2016, it is the second most common cancer following breast cancer. About 70% of our patients come in stage 3 and 4 at first diagnosis, so it's a very serious cancer. And the thing with colorectal cancer is that if you were to catch it early, then you can uh, cure uh, this disease. Which is why we strongly advocate screening and early detection. Screening, which is a method to detect the cancer as early as, as possible, is very, very important. Screening basically just implies testing of asymptomatic individuals. And why is this so crucial is that we know for a fact that most people who present with symptoms are usually already in advanced stages of three or four. So screening is of utmost importance in terms of saving people's lives. So there are two main ways on how to screen. The first and easiest way is testing your stool for blood. It's called a fecal occult blood test and this can be done at home. So you take a swab of your, of your stool and send it to the labs and then it will show whether there's blood or not. But you can also do screening by using uh, scopes. That means you can either do a, a flexible sigmoidoscopy or you can do a colonoscopy. Now colonoscopy entails passing the camera through the back passage and visualize the entire colon and rectum and looking out for lesions like polyps which are precursors to cancer or even early cancer for that matter. Before diagnosed, about two months earlier, I had some bleeding in my tools. I went to a normal clinic. Then the doctor said it's a piles. Went to a specialty center. Then they said it's not a piles. They did some tests and all. Found out it's the second stage of colorectal cancer. I, I had bleeding when I was uh, passing motion. And this bleeding did not go away. I went for a, a colonoscopy. We discovered a tumor uh, in the rectum. We went and biopsied the, the tumour and we discovered that the tumour is malignant. I detected blood in my stool. So we immediately uh, meet up with the gastroenterologist <clears throat> and we make an appointment next day for the endoscopy check. He immediately tell me that oh, it's, it suspected is a colon cancer. So the next thing to do is um, go for the PET scan. Um, then we actually kind of confirmed. My general doctor immediately referred me to the surgeon. I removed my colon almost 10 inch and after that there's a far a spread uh, in my liver so that's why at the time it's detected as a stage 4 colon cancer. As the news came to me, I took it normally, sort of already know that it's going to be cancer. I was very worried at first but when I had a team of doctors who gave me a treatment plan and because of this, you know, it started becoming uh, not so fearful. Definitely it's a shock at the very beginning, um, but I never go through a uh, very dramatic emotions, fair speaking, I just stay very cool. Treatment plan for everyone is different mm -hmm. because sometimes it could be the tumor is at a different position as opposed to you know everyone else. So for myself, it's like the rectum, and when we managed to take it out, I had a stoma back for a while temporarily. But after that, uh, I had to go through chemotherapy as a sort of a preventive uh, maintenance because at that diagnosis uh, stage, when I did the surgery to remove the tumor. It was stage 3. I had chemo, oral tablets, chemo for uh, 25 days, radiotherapy, uh, 25 cycles. Then I went for a surgery, I removed my whole uh, rectum. Then I had a, a temporary uh, back for about 10 weeks, then got removed and uh, I'm living about 80% a normal life. I think it's very important you stay positive and that's where to make you recover faster. Your immune system is better as well. Stay happy, eat good food. <laughs> I was very supported by the Colorectal Cancer Survivorship Society. If you have been diagnosed with uh, colorectal cancer and you don't really have any you know, information, I think it's very good to get peer support.
cancer survivor support group, they play a huge role, essentially. We as clinicians, you know, there's up to a certain level, we can empathize with patients. We obviously will talk to them about the clinical mode of management, but you know, having them to be seated next to a, a cancer survivor, for instance, they probably can express their own personal experience and so on. And so it's a big help, that's a huge help. Sometimes you don't know whether uh, whatever you're feeling or whatever you're experiencing as a side effect from your treatments, whether this is normal. The group chat can actually share um, experience with you. And I have gained uh, inspiration and motivation from that. So it, by exchanging the information, they get uh, some sort of uh, empowerment. You know, the, the empowerment about their disease, they get knowledge and then, and then that will make it things easier for us when we discuss treatment with the patient, when we go through the patient management with them and, and then also the evolution of the cancer, for example, if they have relapsed. So I started advising my friends, my family members, I said cancer doesn't know age. In my case, if I thought it just was piles, I think I don't know whether I'm alive or not today because I already on second stage at that time. So it is important to do screening early. Um, by the age of 40 or 45, you should come and see a doctor and get yourself screened. And always remember that colorectal cancer is preventable, is treatable, is curable.